Welcome to Fibromyalgia Talks. I am your host, Nisi Edwards. In case this is your first time tuning in our show, our show is all about providing solutions for people with chronic pain. And on today's show, our guest is Corinne. She is the manager at J.C. Penney's Styling Salon in Vernon Hills, and she also has a stylist background. Welcome, Corinne, to Fibromyalgia Talks. How are you doing today? Great. Thank you for having me. Wonderful. So today's show is all about hair and personal grooming. So uh, let's get started. Well, Aunt Nisi, uh, getting to know you and uh, the circumstances you have, uh, I ha have known people in my background as well um, who also suffer from chronic pain. And um, I'm here to hopefully give some tips and advice on how to make it easier for you to take care of your personal grooming at home, your Thank hair you. care at home. Because, you know, one of the biggest challenges for people with chronic pain is when you're trying to do your hair yourself, it's painful at times. You know, whether it's your arms, your backs, your, your shoulders, or, you know, your hands, whatever it may be. It's just not easy to do at home. And some of the concerns that I have about doing my own hair is, you know, as you know, I have fibromyalgia and I also have rheumatoid arthritis. And one of the challenges that I was facing with Corrine was I was dealing with hair loss due to some of the medications, you know, that had been prescribed. And uh, I came to the salon and Daisy was wonderful. Uh, she gave me some products to try that helped with the hair loss. And I know you all are phenomenal in terms of working with people with uh, chronic pain conditions and all conditions. We do like to personalize our care for each client as we need to. Um, in the regards of how the medication might affect you, I do know uh, that Nioxin um, has been used uh, for years and um, there's a lot of studies that actually back up their claims that it does help with uh, the lack of hair loss if it's used regularly. Um, and the growing of new hair. Now, I personally, I have tried um, Nioxin. That was a product that you all recommended, actually, that I use. And um, I, the one thing that I noticed is when, before using the product, I was having problems where my hair was shedding. Uh, I know that the hair sheds certain times of the year, but this was more shedding than normal. Than normal. And I knew that that was one of the side effects from one of the medications, the methotrexate, that I had been on. And after using Nioxin, I noticed that my hair began to thicken up and I had less problems with the shedding. Now with the Nioxin, I'm not all that familiar with it, although I've, I use it, but is there different types of um, grades of using Nioxin? Or what I mean is with the Nioxin product, it, is there different solutions that people can use for their hair? It actually does come in different degrees of hair loss. Um, it's uh, formulated for people who have uh, minimal hair loss, and then it, it also has formulations for people who have more advanced hair loss. Um, there's actually three parts to the program, and those parts are the cleansing, and then the scalp therapy, and then the treatment. Um, the cleansing and the scalp therapy both prepare the scalp to be its, its healthiest state. And so if there are um, chemicals in your system that um, are residual in your hair, it will help to eliminate those. And then the, the therapy, the treatment, um, actually helps with stimulation, um, blood uh, circulation to that area to help to feed the hair so it will grow. <clears throat> grow and um, also have more volume. Now are these products easy to use? As easy as using shampoo and conditioner and then the, tr the um, treatment is the third part that's just applied and left in the hair and that's used twice a day, um, morning and evening. Okay, I've used them at home um, but um, I'm not an expert using them, but I have used them, you know, and sometimes I do do my hair at home, but physically, 
I'm just not able because of my arms and the chronic pain. Well, and that's where the professional comes in. Yes. Um, and we're glad that you're one of our clients. Um, we certainly do recommend that if you are in a circumstance where we can help you professionally, we would love to have you just come in and take care of you. Um, if you are not able to see us on a regular basis, my recommendation is to make sure that you have a cut that suits you and your lifestyle um, and also your abilities. So there are definitely looks that have more detail to them and there's looks that are pretty simple um, after the cut is accomplished it's pretty much a wash and go circumstance but that's not gonna be the situation for every client because of hair texture okay so the cut is the number one element and then the second is product that can help support that texture of hair so I brought a few things along uh, that I will just mention and they will help you make your job easier when you, you're doing your own hair at home. Okay, wonderful. So one of the things is um, a dry shampoo. Very popular now. What's so great about this? It's going to help you delay having to shampoo your hair another day or two or even three. So they come in many different um, product lines and there's going to be one that's going to suit you. Um, absolutely a great tool to be able to not have to go through that shampooing and blow drying. Now question for you with that because I've I've seen dry shampoos on the market <coughs> but do you just spray it on and just brush it out or how do you apply that? Yes actually they're, they're all very um, light airy products that you spray into the scalp area especially because that's where usually the natural oils will have a tendency to weigh down your hair and make it feel not so clean. So this will help to absorb some of those natural oils and yes, you just simply apply it um, because it has a spray, you can direct it where you need it and then just simply brush it out. So it sounds like it would just be easy just to part the hair in sections and then spray it and then just brush it out? Yes, especially in the area um, surrounding your face where you have a tendency to perspire sometimes, that's a great way to just freshen your hair. If you've had a workout and you've perspired a little bit, but not to the degree where you feel like you have to shampoo again, um, this will be a style extender for you. Can that be used for all hair textures? It can be. Oh, it, wonderful. It absolutely can be used by anybody. Another tool that can be used by anybody, any hair type, is our leave-in conditioner and um, these come in many different ways too from people who have fine hair to people who have really coarse hair there's ingredients in that help to condition the hair as well but its number one primary um, job is to help you comb through your hair so after you shampoo and condition in the shower you would uh, just simply mist this on the hair and then I recommend using a very uh, wide tooth comb and that will make your job much easier too. The, you can imagine if you use very fine teeth, yes. you're going to be struggling with the hair a lot more. But this is going to help you glide through the hair along with your leave-in conditioner. And do you all sell that wide tooth comb in the uh, salon? I've, I haven't seen that one before. Quite frankly, we don't, um, you know, we like to have a wide variety of things uh, available to our clients. Unfortunately, um, we can't meet every single need, sure. but um, we do have other tools that we can recommend to help. Now, what about um, blow drying? Because one of the problems I have is when I do my hair at home, my hands hurt so bad, you know, my arms my, my shoulders, it makes it very difficult for me to blow dry. I know how to blow by, dry my hair, but the problem is I tire easily. Is it due to the weight of the blow dry that I'm iron that I'm using, or what do you recommend? It can be some of those things. First of all, let me just say if you towel dry your hair after you shampoo and condition, and you're going to put your little leave in product in there to help you get your tangles out, make sure that you're absorbing as much of the water as you can with your towel. Okay. Secondly, don't go right in and blow dry if you, if you can avoid it. If you have some other preparation when you're getting ready for a work day or a special occasion, 
go ahead and do that and let your hair simply air dry as much as you possibly can. Um, the, and it's really only the last 10% of the moisture that is important when you're going in to style, for example, with a round brush. This is a thermal round brush. It has a metal base to it. It has short teeth and it is um, really going to help you to maximize the curl and smoothing that you want to accomplish when you use May a round brush. So it's a well-used round brush <laughs> by me. Okay. <laughs> Interesting. Okay. But again, these are the, the little tricks of the trade that will help you at home as well. Um, there's all kinds of round brushes, but they don't all come with the metal base. That conducts the heat when you're applying the blow dryer. Okay. And the blow dryer itself, I don't have one with me to give you an example, but look for a lightweight blow dryer and one that has enough um, power in it to dry your hair efficiently. In other words, sometimes you can pick up a very inexpensive one at, you know, a Walmart or a Kmart, sure. but they don't really have enough strength behind them to accomplish the task without lots of time. And, th and that's what we want to avoid here. So would you be able to get a more powerful one from a Sally's or some type of store like that? You would. I would tell you the guideline would be um, 2,000 watts. Okay. And again, pick it up, feel it, and determine how that weight of the blow dryer is because it varies greatly. And some will actually advertise that they're lightweight because that is an important feature for lots of people, especially professionals. We have spend so much time with a blow dryer in our hand that it's really True. important for it to be lightweight. So they've come a long, long way in that regard. And that's what I would look for, just to make your job easier. Okay, 1,800 watts. Okay. Yeah. What other products do you have there for us today? Okay, so there's um, such an array of curl products out there now. These are a couple that I brought with. Um, this product in particular helps to define the, the natural curl. So this is somebody who's going to wear their natural texture. And... What a great thing that is if you can enhance your own natural curl and not have to go through the blow drying and the flat ironing and, and all of those things. So that's where these products co come handy. Um, and this is um, a product that you just simply spray in, say when you get up in the morning and the curl doesn't look so fresh, you can just spray this in to renew the curl. Oh, okay. So, they're, they're really designed to make your job easier. And if you find the right fit of product, it, it truly does take a lot of the work out of taking care of your hair. Okay, so I know that one is Redken. And what was the, the one there with the blue bottle? These are both Redken products. This is, um, it's a 10, an excellent product line. It has a lot of wonderful products, but this was their the uh, launch product that they came out with initially. Um, it is, what it says is miracle leave-in product. It is, it's a miracle leave-in product. It works for all hair types. It really does impart some conditioning elements, but it helps to take those tangles out. Um, that is just extra work nobody wants. True. So, and then I brought a couple of other things. Now. We've heard uh, about the conditioning shampoo. Um, this is one that's formulated by Matrix in their Biolage line. Okay. The conditioning shampoo re allows you to just do a one stop shop. It's, it's a lather and conditioner all in one. Oh, really? It's, um, it doesn't have a lot of, of sudsing ability, but it cleanses and conditions all in one. Time. So after so, you wash your hair, you don't have to worry about adding extra conditioner. That's correct. That's it. That's correct. Okay. And then it has a follow-up product. So this is for a medium texture, and this follow-up product would help for you to be able to style your hair. Um, and it comes in fine, medium, and coarse um, formulations. Okay. So it's two products and two products only. So that's one of those things that... Um, some people absolutely love, uh, some people love it some of the time where they switch back and forth between other products. 
Um, and other people will never be able to part from that clean, that foaming sure. of the shampoo. But but if you're um, really wanting to simplify, that's the way to go. And for people who are watching today's show, in case someone is wondering, well, why does all this matter when you have chronic pain? The reason is because when you have chronic pain and based upon the meds that your physician may prescribe for the use of your condition, you still need to be able to take care of yourself. And those medications, many of them may do a wonderful job, but there are still side effects. And that's why this show is so important because men uh, also suffer with chronic pain conditions, not just women. And these products, I'm assuming they can use as well. Absolutely. There, there's um, the feature of women's hairstyling that has to do with dressing more than men do. But Nioxin, for example, um, is frequently used by men. Um, and it's n not just men with chronic um, pain conditions. True. It's, it's just, you know, men have a tendency um, genetically to have thinning hair often and the nioxin works for that as well. Because you know when you think about hair loss that can be so devastating. You Absolutely. Know, and it's very devastating for many people uh, as well as depressing. So that's why it's important that I say when I say that it's all about your own personal grooming and, and taking care of you whatever works for you. Well, and hopefully you can align yourself with a professional that will guide you and help you make the decisions that will make your life easier. Okay. And I um, see you have some other products for us. Well, I have a couple of other tools that I wanted to mention. First of all, um, these are Unsung Heroes clips, um, simple clips, and they help you to divide your hair into sections so that you can use your tools more easily. Um, when you comb out your hair, that's all great, but if, you go, if you're going into blow dry, you really want to be able to focus on section by section. So just having simple clips um, will help you make your life so much easier when you're going to blow dry. And your, pro your end product will be so much better too. Okay. And then I just wanted to show you, this is just a simple example, and they've They've kind of come and gone in style through the years, um, but they're just simple hot rollers. And these really work well for people who don't feel that they can really work with that round brush. And there's a lot of folks that give it a good try, but in the end they feel more confident just being able to section their hair and put the hot rollers in. I've used hot rollers uh, a long time ago. In fact, my mother-in-law gave me a hot roller set and it, it does give your hair a body and, and curl. It does and you know you don't have to um, be a great stylist to be able to use hot rollers and get a good effect. Now with the hot rollers because I'm sure since I, I've had my set of them they've probably changed over the years but is there like a pin inside to hold them in the hair? These have clamps okay. and I didn't, I didn't uh, get them out to show you but yeah they just simply have a one-size-fits-all clamp that okay. you can easily put on and you know what the great thing about that is is um, those clamps are not that hard to come by if you should break or or lose some of the clamps there a uh, Sally's for example would be a place that you can replace those easily okay so one more tool I want to mention um, this is actually kind of new on the scene and what this is is um, a styling brush um, it gets up to 400 degrees, which is the same temperature that a flat iron gets um, okay. as hot as, but it doesn't have the two sides to be concerned with. So you're actually just picking up the hair and you're using it to form a bend, to form a curl, to form a lift, to smooth the hair. It does all those things. and. It's so much easier to use for some people than using the flat iron. I with, haven't seen that before. Blade. We've been carrying them now um, for about the last three months. Okay. And um, it's just become a very popular tool. We're excited about it. I personally have one at home. I, I don't have a lot of chronic pain. I have some arthritis, but um, I just find this gives such a great result with such ease. Is it lightweight? It is lightweight. Oh. Okay, it is. 
Now, question. So with these, I know with the flat irons, I've always been told to get those that have, um, I believe, the ceramic plate or... Correct. So with those, you don't have to worry about that. This has a ceramic oh, it does? base as well. Okay. And um, it gets hot from the bottom, but you're protected from that heat, um, so you can handle it and it's it's not going to burn you you don't have to worry about burning yourself true your hand your neck um, now if you don't want to do just like a, a curl band then can you just use that just to brush your hair with too the smooth heat? absolutely yeah. oh, absolutely that's wonderful and it can be a great touch-up tool so if you are somebody who is able to come and get your hair professionally done this can help extend the life of your professional style or just buy it if you when you can't come if you you, you know do it at going home. Going on a cruise, yes. it's what a great tool to have. You oh, can, that sounds you can good. Swim <laughs> swim in the afternoon and touch up for your fine dining in the evening. Okay. Now I know that at the salon you do have someone um, who works there who does have chronic pain. Yes. And how, if you don't mind me asking, how does she manage? Because I know that a lot of times, a lot of people are, are not able to work a full time job let alone a part-time job because the pain can be very excruciating. Well, I've worked with her through the course of our journey together and she um, finds it best to work shorter shifts and she does work on a part-time basis. Okay. Um, she has very dedicated clients. She's an excellent stylist um, and yes, some days are better than others for her. Somehow when she gets into doing what she loves, it, it tends to become more background than foreground for her. Okay. Um, in terms of her own hair, um, I've talked to her about it. She chooses to wear a longer layered look and that tends to be a little bit more work, but she's learned to simplify it as much as she can. Um, she will shampoo her hair at night and let it dry naturally and then she'll use an, another tool to curl it, say the hot rollers for example. Okay or a curling, curling iron the next day. So she kind of breaks her, her regime into parts, so it's a little bit more manageable for her. That's great. And if all else fails, um, she will create a nice a professional ponytail. There's <laughs> nothing wrong and with that. that. <laughs> well, that is one of the things that we have to address when I, you know, we speak with a client. Um, if she's a very active woman, sometimes having a little bit of length on her hair and being able to just pull it back is an option yes. and, and that works very well for a lot of people. So we have those conversations and make sure that we give that person what's going to work best for them. Now you mentioned about um, haircuts earlier, finding one that works for you. So depending upon the cut, that's what makes it easier to manage your, your hair? Well. So let me give you an example, um, and this is just um, general advice for anybody in any walk of life, uh, but especially for people who uh, suffer from chronic pain. Um, you can achieve a cut in many instances that is basically just considered a wash and wear. You okay. know, the cut needs very little maintenance. Um, maybe a little light blow drying. Sure. So if that if that's something that the texture of your hair will allow for, that's really something that you might want to consider. Um, I have um, two grown boys now, but in the prime of their growing up, I was very active in their school and scouts and working and I I really had a haircut like that because one of the things I did was teach swimming and I was in and out of pools several times a week. So it was an important time in my life to have my hair not be so demanding. Sure. And you know, that's a, a key point, having your hair not be so demanding. Because when you're going back and forth to the doctor, you're getting laps, you're getting x-rays, treatments, no matter what it may be, you don't want to have to be fussing about your hair. You just need something that works for you so that you can just go and take well, care of yourself. and feel yes. like when you look in the mirror, you, yes. you like what you see. True. Um, because, yes, you, you can just go people watch in the mall, um, for example, and you know some people really put some effort into putting themselves together and other people are very, very casual. Yes. But whatever works for you is what's important. That's true because, you know, sometimes for me, when I come to the salon, even when my husband drops me off, I'm in so much pain. But having a good conditioner, 
that makes me feel good, especially with a lot of my meds. It makes your scalp so itchy. Well, that is um, something that we definitely want to address with somebody like you that's suffering from the side effects of medication. Um, you can use products at home that will give you deep conditioning results, okay. and we offer those uh, treatments in the salon as well. And they do help to relieve dryness of the scalp and dryness of the hair. And many medications do result in a lot of dryness in the skin and the hair. So how often should you be deep conditioning on the hair? It really depends on how often you're shampooing your hair. Um, if you're shampooing once a week, for example, a once a month treatment may be enough for you. Okay. Um, or maybe even every other week. Um, for other people who shampoo more often, once a week is uh, typically what we advise. Okay. And I've noticed in the salon it's not just women that you have, you also have men. Well, that's kind of been a, a journey, um, and I was uh, uh, in the styling salon um, in the very beginning of it. It was actually against the law in the state of Illinois for men to be in women's salons. Really? And that had to do with the Barber's Union, which used to oh. be very, very strong. And that law changed in 1975. I actually have a letter of notification, <laughs> and um, it changed everything. Um, there were a lot of uh, men at that time who were wearing longer layered styles and the barbers weren't being able to translate those looks for them. So they were eager to come to salons. And it's, it's really been that way ever since. Um, a lot of men are very happy to come into styling salons and uh, appreciate the techniques that we learn um, yes. to cut hair. And it does so. make a difference, you know, because no matter who you are, you still want to be able to feel good about yourself. Absolutely. And typically in a salon like ours at JCPenney, we're there for the whole family. Yes. We always do um, offers for the family when it's back to school time to get the kids in for their haircuts. And um, we like to have the whole family be part of our clientele. Yes, and you offer a lot for the whole family because I know that besides the, the hair care, you, you also offer facials and, and different things, which is also important because I know that medications can affect your skin. Absolutely. Well, if you're suffering from dryness of the scalp, it's definitely affecting your skin um, all over too. But facial skin it has a lot of different priorities than body skin. So having a professional give you a facial, she can address a lot of different things, the dryness being one of them, but how it affects the aging of your skin too. Okay. So, so for people with chronic pain who are watching today's show, um, if they come in to the salon, uh, will you be able to show them if they ask, for example, hey, um, I watched the show on Fibromyalgia Talks and can you help me put together a little kit for myself? Would you all be able to assist them in doing that? Absolutely. Uh, one of the things we pride ourselves in is doing a thorough consultation with our clients. So everything that would happen in terms of your hair care in the salon would be addressed to your personal needs. So yes, we would absolutely want you to leave with things that would make your life the easiest when you get home. Okay. Are there any other tips that you can provide our viewers? Well, one, one thing that I didn't mention earlier, and this is a uh, a particular brand uh, called Silk Infusion, but the essence of it is it's a serum and it does uh, multi multiple things. It does help to uh, defrizz the hair and many textures. That's really the problem. Um, it's not that people mind their curls so much, but they don't enjoy the frizz okay. factor. But if you are smoothing your hair with a flat iron, this also helps to back that up. and to prolong it. It gives a barrier to help the humidity not return your hair to that frizzy state. So another important tool. What about if your hair uh, is, is dull in color, meaning it's, it's not shiny? I mean, what can you do for that? Well, th that's kind of a, a whole nother um, topic, but okay. <laughs> um, using color um, in whatever way um, helps you um, enhance yourself the best. Um, and some people really don't look for high maintenance. They True. look for very simple things that they can do. 
um, we have what's called a glossing. A glossing is simply has very little or no color and it puts a shine on the hair. It's, it's a formulation of basically a clear product that okay. adheres to the hair and adds a, a glassy shine to it. Um, and it can be mixed with some color as well. Okay. Um, that's very low maintenance because it never needs to be repeated. Um, it's, it's not that you're going to see a regrowth from it at all. So it can be done whenever the mood strikes you or for a special occasion. I was asking because sometimes with all the mitts that's prescribed, your hair can look dull. And the serum is actually one of those things that can help you in that regard too. It, it is the cosmetic shine okay. as opposed to the glossing that I referred to, which is more of a chemical shine. Okay. Well, I thank you for coming in to show today. You've brought in a lot of wonderful products. Well, I hope I answered a lot of questions that people have um, ab about trying to make things easier for themselves. Um, you have, and it's great to know, uh, I really like that product about the, the dry shampoo. I've been afraid to try it because I've seen it in magazines advertised, but I've never used it myself. Well, it's come a long, long way. Do you remember the days where you used to sprinkle something in and then brush it out and it gave the hair a very matte finish? Um, no, I've never used it. Well, those, okay. those w have been um, part of our lexicon for a long time. We um, have used them for people who are suffering from chronic pain, who are in the hospital. Okay. Um, it's been available, but it was not a good solution. So um, finally, we have these lighter weight products that um, are a fine mist, and there is no residue on the hair. It doesn't give it a, a matte finish. So it's a whole different product, and yes, they're very, very popular now because they can really give you that extra day or two for your, on your hairstyle. That's true, because I know that um, when I was in the hospital not too long ago, in the personal kit that they give you besides the toothbrush and um, the toothpaste, they had something for dry shampoo. You know, and I thought to myself, oh, well, that's great that they're able to offer that. Do you know what the product was like? No, I didn't use it. Yeah, I think it's what I was just describing to you, okay, which, probably you, like is. I said, yeah. you know, that is kind of one of the uses of it is when people are not able to shampoo their hair in the hospital, it does help them feel a little, little bit fresher, but it's not a great result with the powder-based products, and these are definitely not those products anymore. Yes, because with the powder-based ones, what all, the reason why I didn't use them is because my first inclination was, okay, I put that in my hair, I don't want to see powder all over my head. Well, <laughs> and that is one of the side effects of those products and why, why they really were not that popular. Okay. So, so that's definitely changed. Well, it's come a long way. A long way. <laughs> Are there any other tips that you can provide us today? Well, one of the things uh, that people don't even think about as much anymore because our styles have changed so tremendously is hairspray. Oh, So, okay. quite frankly, if you um, do your hair in the morning and you can just give it a, a coat of hairspray, and I'm not saying a, a helmet, I'm saying just <laughs> a, a light spray of hairspray, it will make your hair look more consistent throughout the day. You won't be having to go in the bathroom and fuss about it three or four times during the day. Um, so it's really a tool to, to help you look consistent through the day and not have to worry about doing touch-ups. Now, it's the thing that concerns me about hairspray is that uh, back in the day, there were some that, like you said, about the helmet. You spray it, and it's so harsh and drying. And again, we have so many different formulations yeah. now, and most of them are very lightweight. Um, it is also um, part of our um, e ecology now okay. not to use those very heavy products um, because they would linger in the air. Yes. So now the new, newer formulations are very light, and they don't weigh down the hair, and they don't hang in the air. And from my understanding, you can comb through it and it still holds. It is basically like using a little bit of spray starch, if, okay. if I can use that analogy, um, so that it, it does give the hair some memory. Okay. Hmm. A, a lot of things have come a long way. <laughs> yeah. Well, and, you know, it's worth conversation. Um, it, also, we 
really enjoy when our clients have questions about um, hair care and what going to work well for them so that we can answer their particular needs. Yes, because in one of my uh, chronic pain support groups, one of the, um, and that's why this topic for me was very important and to have you on the air with us is because I've heard many women and some of the men say, you know, taking care of their hair is a challenge. There's, there's, there's breakage, there's, there's drying, but the main thing is the hair loss, which is very devastating. So I'm glad to see that there are so many products on the market that can help alleviate that, especially with the nioxin and others. Absolutely. And if it is a situation where the hair has thinned through illness and it's not going to return, there's, there's hair options um, in terms of hair additions um, that look very natural as well, too. Okay. Wow. Any other tips? Because you've given us a lot to think about. This is really helpful because, you know, I totally forgot about the, the hairspray. Well, the, like I said, that's one of those things that's kind of gotten forgotten because there's so many new amazing things that the chemists keep coming up with and we can hardly keep up with it. But the end result is that it's going to make things easier for us um, on a day-to-day -day basis. So for people with chronic pain, whether it's, it's cancer, fibro, RA, or whatever your condition may be, it sounds like to me it's best to have, when you're not able to go into the salon, to have your own personal kit at home with your go-to professional products that you need to maintain and manage. Absolutely. If they are prescribed for your particular type of hair, they're going to perform the best, so you're not going to have the frustration of not having the result that you want. Yes, that's true because when I've gone into my local pharmacy, whether it's Walgreens, CVS, um, Walmart, or wherever you go, you see so many products on the market. But the problem is you don't always know what works for your hair. Which, Absolutely. Which is why it is best to talk to a professional that can let you know what will work for your hair. I mean, because think about the number of people who have purchased products, got them home, tried them out, and have damaged their hair. Not only that, but, you know, it's kind of money down the drain. Oh, yes. Um, so there's three elements to your hair. There's the density of it, there's the texture of it, and there's whether you use chemicals on it or not. Okay. So all of those things are going to make a difference in how you choose your products um, because you have to address all three of those things. So it is really best to let a professional help you um, navigate through all of the choices that you have. You're right because I've thought about texture but when I buy products I never thought about the density and what was the third item that you mentioned? The, the whether it's chemically treated or okay. not. Okay, alright, that does make that a difference, a, yes. A big difference. Color or um, chemicals such as relaxer or perms, um, they all affect the hair so you have to make sure that you compensate for that when you choose your products. And is it also important that clients if they're on a lot of medications that they explain to their stylist to let them know what's going on if they're taking different medications or does Absolutely. that not matter? Oh it matters a great deal. So quite frankly it's something we should be asking you. Okay. Um, but it is in your best interest to, interest to bring it up to your stylist if she doesn't ask or he. But um, you want to make sure that if you're going to be using any kind of a chemical, it could have a reactive um, situation if you apply the chemical when somebody's on a regular medication. And okay. depending on what that medication is, too. True, because I know, for example, chemo, that's important to know. Absolutely. You know, it, whether it's radiation therapy or whatever it is. It definitely affects the way that chemicals uh, react on the hair. Yes, so, it does. It's important to know. And I remember not too long ago, I had a, a sleep study, and the products that they used in the sleep study, where they, when they apply the electrodes to your scalp, it's, um, it's, it's a pace. And once they take the electrodes out, trying to comb through that stuff, oh my goodness, it is, is really difficult, you know. I'm not familiar with it, but I can understand where that would be a problem. It probably yes. would require going directly to the shower and... Yes, I, I did that, up. and I still had a hard time getting it out, and so I had to go to the salon to have um, someone wash it out because, you know, I can't lift my arms all the way up, and, of course, 
trying to look in the back of your scalp and to see everything is, is hard to do. Absolutely. Even for a professional, uh, it is one of those things that all of us have to deal with, and that is that we don't have eyes back there and we have to do the best we can. So. Yes. Well, you guys do a wonderful job at it, and I'm so appreciative of you coming on today's show. I know how busy your schedule is in the salon, and I thank you for coming in today, Corrine, bringing all these products in. And these products can be attained at the salon? Absolutely. These are all products that we keep at our um, JCP salon uh, here in Vernon Hills. Okay, so please let our viewers know that are watching the show where they can find the salon. We are located at the Hawthorne Center. We're in the, the JCPenney store. We are on the lower level um, in the corridor um, with optical and portrait, and we're right next to home. And we have a team of 14 of us, and uh, we're open the store hours, so we have a lot of availability as well. And how many days a week are you all open? Oh, we're open seven days a week. Okay, yep. we, seven we days a week. We, we reflect all the hours that the store is okay. open. Okay, so. and then you're located in Vernon Hills. That's yes. correct. Okay, well, thank you for coming on today's show. My pleasure. It was a really um, honor to be part of this. Thank you. So for, for, for more information on Fibromyalgia Talks, I can be reached at info at Fibromyalgia Talks. Dot com. Thank you for watching today's show. Mm -hmm.